Part 2 of Spiritual Warfare. So in Part 1, I gave, um, I shared a lot of the tools that I learned on how to um, get rid of fear, get rid of anger. Uh, now I must say, sometimes we do get angry and this is normal and it's okay. Uh, when we are under spiritual attack is when it's severe, it's not normal, like um, you love your family and all of a sudden you, you feel like you don't like them, like they're getting on your nerves. That could be spiritual attack. Or I find that for Christians today, one of the attacks is the spirit of condemnation. So something trying to tell you you're not good enough or you're going to lose your salvation or, um, you know, you feel like God is not with you or um, if you believe in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross, then you have the salvation. Um, I'm going to read a few uh, Bible verses about that, actually. Here in Romans 10, so salvation from the Lord is a gift. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God hath, has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confesses is made unto salvation. So once you are saved, because you really believe that, yes, Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He paid through his precious blood for your sins, and it's done. So in feeling guilty or ashamed, let's say you're still smoking and you feel, oh, it's bad, I won't get to heaven. It's a misunderstanding of the word. It cannot be. Um, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, where did it say it's a free gift? For the scriptures said, so these the scriptures is what it said from before. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. So I find that this spirit of condemnation is... Um, trying to infiltrate a lot of Christians. Um, I see it on comments. I see it maybe sometimes in other videos. Um, so this is a spirit you can attack. You can say, spirit of condemnation, I bind your powers in the name of Jesus. And for those that are new and that don't know God, to be saved, it's through faith. And so I'm going to read another, another place on salvation. And um, here. But God, who is rich in mercy, this is in Ephesians 2. 4 to 9. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith 
He loves us. Who are us? It's every human being, everyone, even someone that doesn't know God. And let's say you, you really want to fight some kind of spiritual attacks. This is what you can do. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not by yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of your works, lest any man should boast. So this is where I find the spirit of condemnations to believers. And I'm going to get back to the salvation prayer for somebody that maybe doesn't know God and would like to get saved. But since I'm here at the, um, and this concerns everyone. Some of us find it difficult to believe that we are saved from God's grace. What is the grace? Grace is that God gives us favor. He blesses us. He gives it. It's a gift. Like if your parent all of a sudden buys you a car. It's great. Now you have freedom. And in a way, that is the gift. We get, we get freedom. We're supposed to be um, delivered from from fear from everything. We're supposed to feel a peace. And if we're not feeling peace and we're feeling like I'm not good enough and oh, I'm still smoking, I won't go to heaven and all that, that is from the devil. That is from the dark side. And it says clearly that is is not from our works or from anything we do. That we should not boast. So Let's say I, I stop smoking, I don't swear anymore, and what, is, what does that do? It does make us boastful. All of a sudden, we, we start criticizing uh, non-believers, or we start criticizing other believers that, that you know, we see them smoke, and, oh, this one's going to go to hell. No. God loves everyone, and the gift of salvation is grace through His grace. He is God Almighty, all-powerful, and when we believe with our hearts, the belief is not a logical thing. It is pure heart. It is like a transformation of your heart that happens. And um, I'll go to the place where it says exactly what we are to believe. And in case you don't know God, this is the prayer to say. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. How that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, which is um, Simon Peter, and then of the twelve. So he died on the cross for our sins, through his sacrifice. It's God that loves us so much, he sent his son, to be sacrificed on the cross. Jesus is actually God. God became Jesus Christ. He became a human. And he can because he's almighty God. He can do it. He came down. He lived among us. And who did he go see? He went to see the most poor. He went to see prostitutes. He went to see the, the, the people that really needed him. So, he's not looking for uh, perfection. He loves us in our imperfection. He needs us to trust him, to believe in him. And um, 
after he came, he knew in advance that he had to do the sacrifice for us. And the blood sacrifice is that when he died on the cross, through his blood, he paid the price. And what is that price? It's the price of the sin. See, unless we believe in God and in Jesus, we have a debt to the devil from our sins. And that's what keeps us in bondage. Once we believe in him, that's when we receive the gift of freedom from our sins. So he... he um, did the sacrifice he died on the cross he died for three days he was buried and then he resurrected on the third day and people saw him a lot of people saw him and uh, I think in about 40 days he eventually um, ascended to heaven and so Jesus is alive we believe in a living God that is why he could still till today help us like he helped me to overcome any kind of evil spirit and any fear i was pledged with fear anxiety i do not have these things anymore and um like i mentioned yesterday we are to use the sword of the spirit um, and put on the full armor of god and these are words uh that we say uh, it is also said in uh, First John how first the Word and then the Word became flesh. So God created everything through the Word and it's very powerful. And I think that's why um, it says in the scripture in the Bible that we should be careful the words we use. Now again... <laughs> Let's not feel start to feel guilty because uh, you swore or because uh, um, you got mad and, 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 and you broke something. That is, that's not going to get you to hell. No. God loves you. He knows already you were going to make mistakes. He knows that you're a sinner because you are born in this flesh and this flesh was corrupted from the beginning at the time of Adam and Eve. That's a whole other story. He loves you. He forgives you. Now, if you go astray and, and you really screw up, well, yeah, you can ask him for forgiveness. I'm sorry. And you get back into, into um, in line. But to go and exaggerate, I mean, when you start feeling crappy, because and you're doubting if you're saved or not that is the spirit of condemnation that is not from god god loves gives us peace in second timothy uh, 1 7 for god did not give me a spirit of fear but of strength of love and of sound mind um so feeling ashamed and bad is not from god so that is I wanted to share that because I, you know, I know that a lot of Christians are getting attacked um, by um, the wicked spirits of the dark side. Here I have, um, I want to encourage everyone, and that is something that I learned also recently. Yesterday I spoke in the video I made, um, I spoke about singing, which is a word to attack so what to do, let's say you have the spirit of condemnation, you're feeling all bad. One of the things is to remind yourself of the promises of God. And he has many promises. Uh, I went to this Bible store and I bought, and they have them. It's a little box full of promises of God. And this is one of them example. The Lord is my light, my salvation. I will fear no one. The Lord protects me from all dangers. I will never be afraid. Psalms 27 1. So these, these are our weapons, the words. Um, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. These are our weapons. 
just this. Let's say you learn this only. And that's all you say. Every time you feel bad, you feel guilty about that cigarette. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I will fear no one. The Lord protects me from all danger. I will never be afraid. Another one here. Those who trust the Lord are like Mount Zion, which can never be shaken, never be moved. So feeling bad or ashamed is not part of uh, being in Christ. And this one was Psalms 125.1. And where did I see another one? Ah, I like this one. The Lord says, I am the one who strengthens you. And this is important. I am the one who strengthens you. Why should you fear mortals who are no more enduring than grass? Isaiah 51.12. Guys, we are not, we are nothing. We can't make it on our own. It is through God, through Jesus Christ, that we are made righteous. Through our faith, we have to have faith, yes. But it is Him that makes us strong. It is Him that conquers the fear. It is Jesus that conquers the condemnation. Um, and that's an important point. It is nothing we do. It's not our works and I, I'll do this and I'll, I'll be like that. Let's not forget that it's not only our actions, but our thoughts. Uh, to, to start criticizing another, that's, uh, the Lord doesn't like that. That's like a sin. Um, what I mean, it is impossible for us to be sinless and holy. We are holy and righteous through our belief in Him. When we put the full armor of God, I remember I, at first I used to like say, well, it's not true. What I mean like this. I used to say, so I'm going to put on my breastplate of righteousness. And my thought was, but I'm not righteous. That is incorrect. Yes, we're righteous because now we are a new creation because we believe. And it seems easy, but it's not. It's, it's hard to believe. Believe means trusting. We got to trust when we believe that the Lord will deliver us, that he will free us from the um, uh, spirit of fear. We have to trust that it's going to happen. We have to trust that, yes, I believe He is real. I believe He died on the cross. I believe He is a living God. It is with the heart that we do these things. Sometimes, anyways, I found, and that's why I wanted to share and make a second video to encourage everyone. Often our brains just get in the way. And we must remember that our thoughts are not like God's. God is infinitely wise. He's infinite. He's divine. We cannot, even if we try to comprehend. So that's why he just, he needs us to just trust in him. And do... Listen to that Holy Spirit, that little voice that says, ah, oh, turn to the right, turn to the left. Or sometimes, you know, he gives us a message through something that we read. Just a moment. Okay, I still have that. I have like the sniffle still, like a cold. I'm not sure. I think they're allergies. I don't know. Uh, I was saying that, well, I'm going to end with this, that... For spiritual warfare, we need our number one weapon, which is our sword of the Spirit. And what is that? Is the Word of God. This you can find in Ephesians 6, 14 to 17, where it says the whole armor of God. And so, so the sword is the Word of God. So what we need to do? We need to read the Word of God. 
Yes. Um, sometimes it's complicated. Sometimes it is difficult to understand at first. So before we read it, ask, pray, just pray, just something like this. Please, God, give me the wisdom and understanding of what I'm going to read. Amen. And um, read it every day. Uh, the Lord's Prayer, which is... Uh, oh, the Lord's Prayer is so beautiful. Where the Lord's Prayer... It is in Matthew 6. I just know it's in Matthew 6. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. What is the daily bread? It's the word. Okay, it's food too. But it's the word. So try to, to read it as often as you can. Even if it's for five minutes. Um, and I'll finish the prayer. Give us our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us our debts as we forgave the debts of others. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the might, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I love you. God loves you more. <laughs> See you again.